The McNeil River Lagoon sits 100 miles west of Homer. Nestled in Kamishak Bay, Mount Augustine steams in the distance. Okay guys, ready to walk? In the summer months, only 10 visitors at a time are allowed to come here. Most days start the same. We're gonna walk on like a sandy beach here for a while, and then we'll get into the mud here at McFick. The notorious McFick mud. Tom Griffin with the Department of Fish and Game is our guide for the day. Our small group heads toward McFick Creek, maneuvering through a grassy sedge, and then, as Tom calls it, the notorious McFick mud. Here we go. Okay, this is real time here. You get about a good four to six inches. It's not long before we catch a glimpse of why we all came. So in a quick snapshot, that's either just a young juvenile or it's a, a small adult female. The McNeil River Game Sanctuary is known not only for its high concentration of brown bears, but the unique experience fish and game has crafted over the last 40 years to walk among the bears. And just with this small group, we have a, a rather non-obtrusive presence. And so therefore bears tend to totally ignore us and go about their daily life, fishing, grazing, what have you. And uh, so in a sense, we get a really unique view into, into their world. Bears move up and down McFick Creek. Only remnants of the June sockeye salmon run remain. A sow with two spring cubs feasts on the sedge nearby. Tom says it's the sedge and salmon that fatten the bears for winter. Male bears are known to kill cubs, and this one captures the cubs' attention. But no confrontation on this day. We move on, down to the lagoon, where low tide has drained it to only a few meandering streams. Prime time for salmon fishing. Lori Stender is from Eagle River. This is her third trip. The first time I remember asking the, one of the guys, the rangers with us, what should I do? And he says, just stand there. He's going to do a drive-by. And I said, what does that mean? He goes, He's just going to walk right by you, and sure enough, I mean, we just stood there, and he walked like 20, you know, 10, 15 feet from us, and kind of get, I don't know, it's kind of odd. You kind of get used to it out here, I think. It's odd to be this close to wild bears and have no fear, only awe. <laughs> the Rising family from Chicago just spent four days in the sanctuary. The first day we lunched with a mother and two cubs, we were within 10 yards. They nursed, they played, they fell asleep. Eventually the mother left them next to us and went and ate. Fish and Game calls these bears habituated. For their whole lives, the bears have been around people, unthreatening, and never have the bears tasted human food. The bears can be aggressive, but usually toward themselves. Tom Griffin carries a shotgun, but never a shot fired in anger. I've seen a bear, maybe not this size bear, but I've seen a large adult male, over a thousand pounds, eat uh, 10 to 15 fish um, at, in one fishing bout. In late afternoon, we arrive at the site for which McNeil River is best known, the falls. The falls are about a mile upriver from the lagoon. It's the July Chum Salmon Run, the bears target here. Two platforms overlook the spectacle. At one time this summer, 42 bears were seen at one time. Now, late in the season, we see about 15. These are the big boys, guys like Luther, about 1,500 pounds, one of the biggest bears in the world. Biologist John Hechtel hopes people leave McNeil River with the understanding big bears aren't the boogeyman they're sometimes portrayed to be. They're not monsters. They're, they're animals that have reasons for doing things that you can understand. If you understand bear behavior and you understand how the role of aggression in a bear social structure, uh, for the most part, um, when, even when you're out and about in places other than McNeil, you can really reduce to your risk 
of having problems with bears. The chum run is waning, but with a little effort, these guys do all right. Spectators spend hours, sometimes all day, on the platforms, mesmerized by the activity below. We do a lot of traveling in the Yellowstone area, um, through the west of the lower 48. Uh, we've even uh, taken safaris to Africa. Um, I would rank this above that. A rare glimpse of life in a far-off wild place.